Hey Valley Metal, tonight we're going to be looking at complementary events. Before we do that, let's get started with our trivia question of the night. What is the longest word in the dictionary? We'll be back with the answer to that after instruction. Tonight, officially, our target is 9.1D. I can find the probability of complementary events. Let's build this thing. All right, here's a box. There are eight red, seven blue, and six green balls in it. One ball is picked up randomly. What's the probability that it is red? Well, we got eight red balls, and there's a total of 21. So we have a total of 821. Um, that's the probability of the event. What's the probability that it is not red? This is the probability of the complementary event. So there's eight chances of it being red, and there are 13 chances out of 21 that it won't be red. So tonight we'll be focusing on the complementary event. In order to do that, we really let, have to look at the event itself as well. Let's take a look at some vocabulary words here. Uh, here's the big one tonight, complementary events. All events that are not the outcome, or not the favorable outcome, or the desired outcome. So when you look at rolling a die, the probability of rolling a 1 is 1 6. The probability of that complementary event is 5 6. The probability of rolling a 3 or a 4, well, you get, that's 2 out of 6, or 1 3rd. The probability of rolling the complementary event would be 4 out of 6, or 2 thirds. It's important that we always express these in lowest terms. So complementary events are like looking for the opposite of what you're looking for. So let's take a look at this example here. Um, a standard deck of playing cards has 52 cards in it. What's the probability of drawing a face card? All right, so my total cards here, when I'm looking for the probability of a face card, the total cards are 52. Now we have three face cards, a jack, king, queen, and we have four suits, aces, spades, diamonds, hearts. So three times four would give me a total of 12 50 seconds, that would be my probability. Now, I want to reduce this into lowest terms. So if I divide each by 4, I've got 3 thirteenths. That's my probability of drawing a phase card. So what's the complementary event of that? Well, let's think about it. Here are the phase cards, uh, 3 thirteenths. And all of the other cards, anything else is going to be 10 thirteenths. The complementary event and the event itself, those numerators are always going to add up so that you have a whole 13 13. So here's the event. You have 3 13ths of drawing a face card, 10 13 chance of drawing anything but a face card, and a whole, they add up to be the whole. 3 plus 10 is 13 13 All right? If you wanted to think about it this way, too, without reducing, you have 12 50 seconds. That's your probability of drawing a face card. It would be 40, 50 seconds of not drawing a face card. All right, time for you to get involved in this lesson. All right, I'll work through the event, and I'll have you figure out the complementary event. We're back to the standard deck of cards. What's the probability of randomly drawing a 2 or a 3? OK, so here's what we're looking for, the probability of a 2 or a 3. Well, there are four twos and four threes, and we all know that. So that gives me 8, 50 seconds. That's my probability of drawing a 4 or 3. Now, if I reduce that down to get the number a little more manageable, uh, if I divide each by 4, I've got 2 thirteenths chance of drawing a 2 or a 3. You figure out what the complementary event is. So you're figuring out the probability that it's not a 2 or a 3. Go ahead. All right, let's take a look see and how, see how you did. Well, here's the event, 2 thirteenths. The complementary event is going to be 11 thirteenths for a total of 13 thirteenths. Didn't quite understand that? We can do it this way, too. We have eight chances out of 52 of drawing a three, sorry, of drawing a two or a three, and 52 minus eight would be 44. So 44 chances out of 52 of drawing something other than a two or a three. Okay? The only difference is, I like to work with the numbers reduced into simplest form. It just makes it easier, especially when figuring out that complementary event. All right, let's try another one before I cut you loose. This die has eight sides. Each side has a number one through eight. What's the probability of randomly throwing a multiple of three? All right, so here's my total possible outcomes when looking for the probability of a multiple of three. I've got eight, right? Eight sides of the die. The multiples of three are three and six. So I've got 2 eighths, or when I reduce that, I have a 1 in 4 chance of rolling 
a multiple of uh, three. So what about the complementary event? You figure out what the probability of that complementary event is. Go ahead. All right, let's see. This one's a pretty easy one to start with. Well, here's the probability of the event, one-fourth. The complementary event, that's going to be three-fourths then, giving me a whole four-fourths. So you got three-fourths chance of not rolling a multiple of three. And that's why I really like making sure that I have what I'm looking for. Here's the probability of a multiple of three, probability of not a multiple of three. Looks like I got uh, maybe one more here for you. All right, there's my spinner. What's the probability of the spinner landing on a prime number? I'm going to have you do the whole thing. Remember that a prime number is a number with only two factors, like 1 and the number itself. Like 11 is prime. The only two factors are 1 and 11. Go ahead and see if you can figure it out. All right, let's see how you did. Well, these are the prime numbers on the wheel, 5, 17, and 3. 18 and 21 both have 3 as a factor, so they're not prime. So these are my prime numbers, and I had a total of 5. So 3 fifths was my probability of drawing a spinning a prime number. The complementary event then would be 2 fifths. It's going to be the opposite of that. I bet you got that right. All right, here is your ticket to the show. What's the probability on a standard die of rolling a 5 or a 6? And What's a complementary event of not rolling a 5 or 6? Don't forget to express those in simplest form. All right, this one here, I'm not sure how this is going to work out. We'll just see how it goes. What is the longest word in the English dictionary? Here it is, and it's going to start playing in just a second. It starts right here, and I'll read it for you. Pneumono ultramicroscopic silico volcanico neosis. Pneumono ultramicroscopic silico volcanico neosis. Okay, that's kind of a long word, but basically what that means is it's a lung disease. Who'd have thunk? Um, you can check out the YouTube link for that longest word if you want in the English language, too. All right, thanks so much for listening. Have a good night. Bring your ticket to the show to class. Bye.